Come in, come please. Come. Thank you, sir. Come in, please. Very good, very good evening, sir. Yeah. Sit down, Mr. Bhavanyu. Please sit Thank down. You, sir. Make yourself comfortable. So, Abhimanyu, I see from your profile that you have been working in Nabad. Yes, sir. How long have you been working in Nabad? Sir, it's been seven years. Seven years? Pretty long. Pretty yes, long. Sir. And in the same city or same branch, or have been, you have been transferred here and there? Sir, I've been uh, transferred twice. Yeah. Where, where? What were your tasks and jobs in different positions, different cities? Uh, sir, I joined as a manager in December 2016 in Haryana Regional Office, Chandigarh. Uh, sir, there I was looking after uh, the uh, business initiatives department. Basically, sir, we were financing uh, state government corporations for uh, procurement purposes in that. Uh, sir, then I was transferred to the district Karnal as a district development manager in uh, 2019. And there I worked for four years. And my main profile included uh, working with stakeholders like banks mm -hmm. and also representing Nabad at different foras. Good. Uh, and, sir, working with SSGs and uh, farmer producer organizations. Uh, sir, I have uh, been transferred in 2023 to the Rotak cluster office. There I am the in charge for four districts. Oh, good. So... Let me know, I, tell us, what is the difference between Nabad and other normal banks uh, like uh, the State Bank of India or Union Bank of India, or like that, those banks which are normally we see, we, as a common man, we go and do transactions with them. What is the difference between them and Nabad? Uh, sir, the... Briefly tell me. Yes, sir. The commercial banks uh, are regulated under the Banking Company Act. And basically, they do the activity of uh, deposit taking and money lending. Whereas NABARD is a development financial institution. It is a statutory body, sir. Mm. And it does provide loan, but it does not take deposit taking activity from the public. And it mainly provides loans to state governments and a certain category of banks. And it also acts as a supervisor to cooperative banks and regional rural banks. Okay. So, is it, it also comes under RBI? Does it come under RBI? Guidelines and, and supervision and monitoring? Yes, sir. NABARD is also supervised and regulated by RBI. So, how far is statutory status of NABARD give its freedom from other banks vis-a-vis -vis RBI? Uh, sir, NABARD has been provided a lot of autonomy in functioning uh, in the NABARD Act. Basically, sir, for certain category of banks, we act as a supervisor, although with the overall regulation of the RBI. And also, sir, for our uh, different operations, we do not require approvals from RBI. And it's more of a consultative mechanism rather than... Uh, what are those different operations where you do not require RBI approval? Sir, like uh, the, uh, the provision of loans. So whatever has been mandated under our act, so we can provide those uh, types of loan products to our various stakeholders without RBI approval. Do you also have an NPA problem? Sir, uh, it is at a very slight level in NABARD. Uh, some three, four years back, it was non-existent. But uh, there have been certain financing of uh, NBFCs, which uh, have not repaid us on time. So there is a slight NPA of 0.03%. Uh, of our advances. You have used this word very interesting, the non-banking financial institutions or vision. So what is that? What is that sector? What are, tell us something about that. Sir, so basically, uh, these these companies uh, provide us, uh, pr provide the public with uh, various financial products. Although they are not uh, deemed as banks because they cannot do the uh, deposit taking activity uh, like not the uh, deposit taking is a crucial thing. Uh, yeah, sir, deposit taking is one of the crucial things, sir, that they cannot accept demand deposits, but they are uh, some of the NBSs are catering to the uh, term deposits. There are in certain offices, most of the offices, 
a particular in government there are thrift and welfare societies are you aware about that something like that they also give some deposits give loans to their members and uh, uh, and do a lot of financial uh, activities and they have some financial product of their own choice where do you place them there are many i am saying thrift financial government there are many outside government sector also society and the society the registration of research society act or or trust act things yes. like that sir uh, they are also a particular type of nbfc ic uh, because they would not be termed in the, termed as banks but sir yes they are not yes. bank they are non banking definitely non banking yes sir but they are also not companies because they are they are not a- companies they are society they are trust so uh, probably sir because they are the thrift and welfare things sir in that case i would deem them as the micro finance institutions because uh, they are providing thrift which is kind of a micro loan uh, that way hmm. okay so far good for nabard and your performance uh, please sir oh. continue well mr abhimanyu yes sir say you have mentioned fpo farmers organization yes sir and generally we do the registration under companies act yes sir why not under the society act are not they fpos such groups who are registered under the society act sir they are also fpos and it's not necessary that they need to be registered under the companies act we have fpos under also the cooperatives and uh, cooperative acts and societies act also but government is now preferring uh, to register them as fpcs like under the companies act to provide them more autonomy in functioning so then why why c i mean to say what sort of the autonomy sir like if they are registered as suppose uh, a cooperative uh-huh. then there are certain regulations of a uh, state government that sets in and in terms of appointment in terms of uh, meetings in terms of businesses so their activities are more regulated vis-a-vis if it is a company which is more run according to the uh, board of directors see either the monitoring is poor under the society act or it is only the impression in the society that companies are better performing what is your opinion sir i believe that uh, in terms of functioning as companies we see a better performance and also when it comes to matters related to auditing matters related to monitoring of the firms then also sir there are issues when it comes to societies i have seen sir there are some hassles also so in that case uh, as a company they are more uh, better functioning they can uh, they can do a lot of activities and also the impression of the different stakeholders like the traders and the processors they are also more comfortable in functioning with the companies so you mean to say financial discipline is better maintained there in the under the companies act sir it is not uh, it, it is on average we see that the financial performance is better but there are societies also sir if they are rightly uh, regulated and maintained by the members they also function good so you have also mentioned about the crop diversification and you belong to haryana can you name any good scheme of haryana government which relates to the crop diversification yes sir there is one scheme called mera pani meri mera uh, meri virasat which basically provides financial incentives to farmers to the tune of rupees 7000 per acre if they shift from paddy or sugarcane to i'm not sure about sugarcane sir but paddy to uh, like different crops uh, maize onion etc paddy to the crops which are requiring less water less water guzzling crops yes sir they will get the incentive amount yes sir okay and what are the results of that uh, scheme sir there has been a uh, diversification uh, going on in the state uh, but there is a criticism in the newspaper that in spite of the fact that for the last 3 years the state government is running this scheme uh, there is increase in the paddy area yes sir there is a criticism what are your comments sir uh, it is there sir like uh, the paddy area 
uh, although sir i'm not sure about the exact number of let it. us let us say it is a situation yes sir say <clears throat> if in spite of this fact that government is giving the incentive and the area has increased what may be the reason sir first reason that i uh, can think of and uh, what i have come across also is that uh, the maize crop which is the major crop that is being promoted as a substitute to paddy somewhere sir the procurement price or the uh, market price of maize is not that remunerative to the farmers so somewhere sir there is a hesitation for farmers to shift to maize as far as other crops are concerned also there is a risk of not getting the requisite price good so you are hinting that if we want to reduce the area under paddy to save our falling ground water table yes. then we should stop giving msp to the paddy in haryana and punjab sir i believe the better step would be to provide a short procurement at msp for other crops so we don't need to stop the procurement of paddy at msp What but a short procurement of other crops maybe but as a officer in nabard you are knowing that we are giving msp for 22 23 crops this is a big gamut indeed sir we are uh, we are announcing msp for 22 23 crops but actually sir we are not procuring uh, for all the 22 23 crops why what are the you know problems in it sir basically for msp procurement by the government that uh, that is mainly done for the purpose of pds now wheat and paddy are those crops sir, and even bajra for that matter that is having a lot of requirement when it comes to pds distribution but maize somehow has not got that impetus sir because the demand is not there in the market for uh, uh, in the pds yes sir in the pds uh, you mean to say if we bring pulses and oil seeds in the pds the procurement will uh, automatically increase and the area will increase is it the only solution sir in the short run i believe they will definitely increase if we provide the msp for uh, an assured procurement for these definitely, crops definitely government policies will help but what what more you can think of to increase the area under pulses and the oil seeds sir we need we also need to tap into our export potential now there is a lot of import happening into oil seeds oil seeds sir so there is a lot of demand in india and also outside india so somewhere if we increase the area and initially if we provide incentives ultimately we won't be uh, needing to provide any incentive it's just for one time or twice if we can do that and show the demonstrative effect of it and was the scene of the pesticide you have also mentioned in your bio data somewhere i read uh, <clears throat> is it so that uh, farmers they use more than the recommended dose particularly in the basmati and our consignment they have been rejected yes sir our export consignment yes sir they are in certain cases they are using it 10 to 100 times more what is the requisite amount and what is the requisite uh, like permissible amount in the export market so uh, there are three major issues sir in this not using the right amount hmm. not spraying at the right time dose you can say right yes dose. Sir, right hmm. dose sir yes and not using the right type of pesticide so all three issues are uh, okay as a head of the district how will you tackle this problem sir there are good agriculture practices they are definitely yes sir sir like if i give an example of the project that we did and successfully how will you change the mindset of the farmers sir ultimately i believe that an incentive led model really works in this case we provided a very little incentive See, of incentive is being given by a scheme prepared by the state government and now you are working as a deputy commissioner in a district in your hand is only the change of the mindset the extension army is in your hand yes sir what is your solution sir in that case i would work with the uh, agriculture department hmm. and also the kv case for going to the farms and arranging uh, awareness generation like sir if if we use if we do only two things uh, if we use the laser land leveler and proper nursery transplantation and seed treatment sir 80 90% of the pesticide requirement would be over by just these two operations so these are the simplest how laser land leveler is you know is related to the pesticide 
solution how sir if we do the water you can save it's okay i can understand that you can save the water if leveling is done by the laser sir laser led leveler is properly used hmm. sir it will level the land and okay. there will not be any stagnation of water at places hmm. sir wherever there is a stagnation the fungal disease comes in so there's an indirect connection sir and this is an sop that has been mentioned by the university and also the uh, epidas institution working in this regard so okay so we have traveled a lot from uh, you know starvation to self sufficiency and now uh, a plateau has reached yes sir. in the crop production we have to break it so the question before us is productivity per unit more yield yes uh, we want to touch china do you have any solution any scheme for it sir there can be a few things that we a can few, do a few few steps so first thing that is stagnating it is our soil health so we are somewhere using uh, access of urea and neglecting certain other uh, say micro minerals that are required micronutrients in that regard so proper soil health analysis and uh, ensuring the dosage based upon it can be one thing sir second is there are new varieties coming up uh by our institutions like iari and uh state universities and cssri and uh, these institutions so they need to be promoted so they have a yield potential of 1.5 times that what we are doing right now but somewhere the farmers are not getting the right seeds or the certified seeds for these things and also not the awareness for the same so with these two things i believe sir my can... last but one question say uh farmers are burning the paddy stubbles yes. this problem is well discussed in the newspaper and everybody everybody is aware of can you give any solution to this problem yes what sir what is solution sir the first thing that should be done in this case is the crop diversification itself so if the paddy area can be reduced to uh, other things sir be it horticulture or millets so first thing can be this second can be the in situ crop residue management see i am not asking reduction in the area right sir. conditionally you are keeping the same area right sir. same pro- problem is still there do you have any solution yes still then yes sir oh. sir currently the farmers have come, uh, like there is eno- enough awareness generation among the farmers that hmm. the machinery is uh which are available can make it in a very good form uh, as a fertilizer the paddy stubble so if there is availability of the machinery at the right time farmers are using it sir one okay good sir second can be the ex situ management of the stubble ex situ is with the machines uh sir, in situ sir in situ and ex situ both sir like hmm. for ex situ we can uh, bale the stubble yes. and that can be utilized for by the industries yes sir and brickets and hmm. these things third sir uh, there are varieties which can be harvested early in bed yes early varieties yes sir we should go for the early varieties so that the window he may get the farmer may get a good window for the wheat sowing yes sir at least one month window that is the good solution okay the last one uh, in your district there is agitation of the farmers yes sir as a district collector how will you handle it so the uh, best solution to any kind of agitation is to keep communication channels open to the protesters and secondly sir that anyone should not be allowed to take law and order in their hands so there should be deployment of adequate forces and if required additional forces uh, are required then also uh, requesting the same from the state government and the center so both these things should go in tandem and the protesters should never feel that the state is against them and they should be uh, provided adequate opportunities for peaceful protest also okay thank you dr goel thank you sir imanyu yes sir you are very expert in agriculture being agriculture scientist i will not ask any sir i, many, I am not an questions. expert in agriculture one question only for agri- <laughs> this agriculture have you visited sonipat district 
Are you the Sonipat district? Sir, I belong to Sonipat district. Okay. Only in Sonipat district, there is no burning of pedista. Why is it? In Haryana, there is no burning of pedista. In Sonipat, why is it? You will not find. Sir, I believe that the uh, farmers are utilizing the machineries properly in that case. And... Uh, machinery to dusri jage bhi hai hoot Yes, sir. Sonipat is the district in the world which is growing maximum mushroom in the season, seasonal cultivation. Na? Mushroom. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. they are utilizing that pedista in mushroom cultivation. Very nice. Thank you, sir. Thank you for updating my knowledge on this. Yeah. yeah this, in our time, there was a country, Yugoslavia. Yes, sir. Now it is not in the map. I, I was seeing the word map. This country is missing. Yes, what sir. is that? Why it is missing? Uh, sir, there has been a dissolution of Yugoslavia in 1989 and it has uh, been now broken into seven different countries, uh, namely sir, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Bosnia, Herzegovina and uh, Croatia, Serbia, etc. What is the problem of Serbia and that uh, another country? What is the another country? Yes, sir. Kosovo. 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 What is the problem in this country? Because Kosovo has been carved out from the Serbia. Yes, sir. At that time. Sir, what, is, what, is the, what is going on there? So there was a major civil war uh, back in the 90s, initial 90s. Uh, and Kosovo demanded independence from Serbia. So there was a huge humanitarian crisis and uh, civilian killings that I could recall. Uh, the basic problem this time? See, there is an ethnic civil war. What is the basic problem? Why they are in this fighting? Sorry, sir, I am not aware about it. Then in Nabad, you have some banks, commercial banks, they have made Kisan clubs. Kisan clubs? Yes, you sir. might have visited in Kisan clubs. Yes. Sir. Now, this, these commercial banks, their main priority is deposits and lending. They are not taking interest. What are you doing in that case? They are not interested in meeting with the farmers and all that. In that situation, what are you doing? I have handled this situation. I sir, have seen practically. Sir, can you please repeat the question, sir? That the commercial banks, you have made this self-help groups. Yes, sir. And uh, Kisan clubs also. Yes, sir. Basically, Kisan clubs are there in the villages. Yes, sir. With all commercial banks, they are handling two, three Kisan clubs. But they are not calling the meetings even once in a year. Yes, sir. And Nabad is always pressing that you call the meeting. Why they have made this Kisan club if they are not interested? Uh, sir, the Kisan clubs that uh, like I have worked with, although sir, the Kisan club scheme is a bit older. And from that, the government has now come about the idea of the FPOs. So initially also the Kisan clubs were also formed by Nabad. Sir, yes, there are issues because uh, initially there was a lot of enthusiasm and farmers used to meet regularly and even the experts from the department, agriculture department, KVKs used to visit them. What is this KVK? You have said many times. What are the functions of KVK? Sir, basically? KVK stands for Krishi Vigyan Kendras. Sir, basically these are the extension arms and they are affiliated to the state agriculture universities. So main purpose Who is... Who is financing them? Who is financing them? Sir, finance is coming from ICAR, uh, Indian Council for Agriculture Research. And they are... Uh, basically monitored by the state agriculture university. Have you heard free movement regime? Free movement regime, what is that? Sir, it is basically an arrangement between India and Myanmar to provide for a movement of civilian population uh, within a designated area from the borders uh, on both sides of the border. So I think it is 8 kilometers, sir, from the international border. 16 kilometers. Yes, thank you, sir. So it provides for free passage without any visa restrictions to the civilians present in that area. What is the dispute between Philippines and China in South China Sea? What is the basic dispute, basic issue? Sir, actually China is building a lot of uh, artificial islands in the region, in the South China Sea. So first is the security concerns that Philippines feel. What is that shoal? I want to... Sir, there is, there is also a disputed island called the Scarborough Shoals in the region, which is 
contested and which is my last uh, question is what is going on in sudan sir there is a civil war going on in sudan basically the army and the paramilitary force force called rsf so they are claiming for uh, thank you thank you thank you thank you sir and i remember you are appearing second time yes, before us right you was appeared before uh, yes sir last, uh, last year. year what happened to that sir uh, i made it last year mm. to danix uh, yeah 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 hey, sir we can danix uh sir i have been allocated danix or although i have not joined it this year so you have mm-hmm. not mentioned in your actually yeah. sir at that point of time the allotment had not come that's why right. so i could not mention okay. it that's right yeah. and yes sir ah yeah. yes you would the case should have been somewhere mm. some for them somewhere it, it must be mentioned mm. anyway yes, uh let me ask few uh, basic questions uh you know what is a uh, gender based budgeting sir basically uh, when the when the budget uh, estimates are made or the budgetary schemes that are being finalized hmm. so taking into perspective the pro tell me few na- states name which actually had implemented gender based budgeting sorry sir i am not available uh, karnataka karnataka okay sir uh right uh, if you look at the you know indian parliament has passed bharatiya nyay samhita bharatiya you know uh nagrik swachcha samhita and bharatiya you know uh, sakshi samhita right how how it will transform india's criminal justice system so first is that it will make it more uh, swift because there are time bound uh, limits for prosecution investigation and ultimate judgments right second sir the new age crimes hmm. like uh, ai cyber crimes and also uh, related to terrorism now they find a mention hmm. in in our criminal codes mm-hmm. which were absent in the ipc hmm. so that will tackle uh, these issues as well third i believe is sir it has done away with the uh, controversial sedition law now it has moved from rajdro to deshdro hmm. so somewhere now uh, it's more of uh, like uh, uh, that should be there in a democratic country so it mm. should not be uh, a kind of colonial legacy that should be present and uh, any this dissent should not be construed as sedition mm. so mm. that has been ensured in the uh, fine rules. we have seen you know that the worldwide islamophobia right and if you look at the recently in netherland there's a far right uh, leader has won now if you look at um, argentina right that you know a leader that was also far right far right leader and that has made an impact globally on decline of democracy now any report that you could cite which talks about democratic recession so there is a this is an index uh, i'm not sure about which agency publishes it freedom but house it, freedom house is one agency yes sir so that basically uh, analyzes the democratic situation in various countries and ranks the democracies accordingly mm-hmm. so so what variables it it measures sir it basically measures the various freedoms provided in the democratic uh, state and also the kind of a uh, free and fairness of media free and fairness of the elections political rights and civil liberty yes sir yeah yeah you know if you look at the new elected leader of argentina he himself uh, claim as a anarcho capitalist yes sir. right what is anarcho capitalism so sorry sir i am have not heard about it fine uh, you know recently uh, supreme court in its judgment has legitimized the abolition of article 370 right and if you we look at the supreme court judgment in sr bome case which actually you know um, let down federalism as a basic structure right of indian polity how is it controversial sir i do not see there is any dichotomy between the two judgments because the situation of jammu kashmir cannot be attributed to any other state in the country so it's a peculiar situation sir and all uh, our government of india 
has always maintained federalism as the basic structure and always guarded the states. And also in this case, the Supreme Court has taken assurance from the center to uh, re reinstate the status of uh, JNK as a state. And center has assured that. So it's just a matter of time, sir. And it's also in our national interest for the time being that it remains a UT. Because for proper integration of JNK, uh, it was required for that moment and government deemed it necessary that to, to change its status. But it's not uh, a threat to our federalism that way. And even the Supreme Court judgment is absolutely apt in this regard. Fine. Uh, what is a C. Wright Mill understanding of American democracy? The C. Wright Mill's understanding of uh, democracy in America that it is not a perfect democracy. And it cannot claim that liberal democratic and liberal capitalist order uh, can be the only model for democracy in the entire world. Because for a perfect democracy, the developmental power to the people should be 100, like it should be maximum, the coercive power should be zero for uh, the, of the state. But if it, uh, he analyzes... Okay, why India yes. is claiming that India is a mother of democracy? On what ground? Sir, we have had the democratic structure since very long. In the ancient times, we had the concept of sabhas and samitis in the basic times. We have uh, Buddhist Republican king, uh, Republican states present uh, since the ancient times. And even today, we see, sir, we are the largest democracy in the world. And we have provided the right, uh, the, the universal adult franchise in the 1940s, uh, 50s itself. Even for a country which had only a literacy rate of 15% back then. So it was a revolution and that showcases our democratic ethos. So rightly, sir, we can be called as the mother of democracy. Who is generally known as the father of ethics? Sir, I am not sure about You had a ethics paper, right? Yes, Socrates, sir. right? Yes, what was sir. Buddha's uh, stand on politics? Uh, sir, uh, what particular aspect about politics, sir? The Buddha's understanding of politics, how politics should be. For example, Cotillier talks about realistic politics, right? Yes, sir. Now, what you know, Buddha talked about, what kind of politics he actually he was concerned with? Sir, Buddha was concerned about non-usage of violence in any kind of politics and also a welfare state, which is a, which is a non-coercive state where everybody should get the equal opportunity. Mm. So you also talked about equality of all castes and all Any gender. Buddhist literature that you suggest which actually explains politics? So the best way to understand Buddhist political thought would be the Ashokan edicts, I would say. Uh, okay. That's fine. Fine, yeah. Your interview is over. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, you know, chair will give you... First of all, uh, Abhimanyu, I will say that... Uh, your factual information should be complete somehow. So your uh, 2020, 2022 result uh, should also reflect somewhere yes. that you appear interview and finally selected. Allotment must have come later on, but selection must have come uh, must, much earlier when you were filling up this form. Sir, actually, uh, I made it me, to the reserve list. Huh? So, sir, I made it to the reserve list, so it was not there back then. Hmm? Sir, the result had been out, but I made it to the reserve list, sir, which comes you in the November. That result has been out to the reserve list, right? Yes, yeah. sir. So that's why. You are not in the original list. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, when this form was filled up, your name was not there. Yes, sir. <coughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Somehow you must tell the board uh, when you are telling about yourself, your achievement, you're working somewhere. Must tell. Mm -hmm. Because <coughs> your full information should be. And they would like to know why you have not joined Danix. Oh, I have a reason must be reason must be there. Good reason for you not to join Danix. Service. Sir, I'll be joining Danix. You're joining. Uh, yep. Actually, I'm serving my notice period in Nabad. So I'll be joining it in March 2020. Oh, okay. So these facts somehow, I don't know what is the mechanism to convey these facts, but these facts mm. should be known to the board, board UPSC right, board. Uh, do you go and fill up another form when you go for the interview? No, sir. No, no other form. So generally, uh, 
we are asked about to introduce ourselves. So maybe ah, that's also a stage when you can tell them to do the ball there. Fair yes. enough. So uh, uh, next to this uh, comment, Abhimanyu, I am quite comfortable with your performance. You are comfortable. You compose. Your information level is also generally good, and your communication is also quite good. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, knowledge part, certain areas you need to improve yourself. Uh, certain areas are very important. Where okay, you, mm, I think internationalization is your subject. Yes, sir. You have chosen that. Yes, so sir. there you must be very, very. Uh, Clear as far as knowledge is concerned, right? Yugoslavia is a is a history, the post Cold War, World War, Cold War scenario. Yes, sir. the Yugoslavia was dissolved, the like USSR was dissolved, other countries, Germany, etc., united. So same as Yugoslavia was also dissolved. Post Cold War, War, Cold War scenario. Right. Sir. uh democracy ranking in india democracy the mother of democracy so uh you must know our ranking there jnk integration uh, best is to confine to my session to all the, is a is the supreme court judgment you read yeah. it they, com- they have covered almost everything from the legalistic point of view constitutional point of view uh, not from the political point of view and i don't like this uh, thing that uh, only after 370 judgment the proper integration jnk was always part of india much before 370 or no 370 jnk was part of india legally historically and culturally also you can say because there was accession with india yes, and there sir. is a accession like any other state same uh, instrument accession was signed with india And same instrument extension was signed by other states. Only thing is there was some provision for a special uh, federal arrangement. So there, as far as the accession is concerned, as far well as integration is concerned, there was no uh, legal dispute. But some special status was there, where, where rights were uh, and some mechanism was given. Given, I am not going to details. So best is you go through the judgment, right, sir, which has been uh, well written and quite elaborate. And uh, justice calls additional judgment or epilogue should also be read. He has given a separate judgment. Justice calls. If when is your interview, sir? It's not, not in it. the first schedule. So you have time, and you can read. This is not very. I mean, if it's quite a lengthy judgment, but you can still you can read this. Right. Readable judgment of him. Uh, and another question is: Don't ask counter question. Right. He asks question. He says, "Sir, which part of the, uh, of which this thing? No, no. If you are not understood the question, sir, you can, sir, I have not understood the question. So, can right. You, right. Can you repeat, sir? Can you elaborate? But instead of uh, saying this thing, don't ask. Okay, which part you are referring to, and which portion you are referring to, or which this thing like that? Yes, sir. That's not a good thing. I mean. So that's all from my side. Uh, you have to. Uh, we have been working in Nabad. Yes, sir. So, a lot of question can be expected. Nabad and linked issues, and there is a lot of issues of non-banking uh, financial institution. Yes, sir. and Nabad has been given a specific charge by the government to regulate non-banking financial institutions. Sir, it's a specific duty assigned to Nabad only. That's a right. big sector, which is an operation in the country, <clears throat> and it's not regulated in many many sectors, like societies and trusts and various private uh, self-help group, which is not regulated. It required regulation, required legal regulation, and it's a huge amount of money which is there. It runs in th- hundreds and hundreds and crores and thousands and crores and different non-regulated NBFCs also. Right. So there's a big issue on that count of money, and they're causing therefore many many people are collapsing. Uh, there are many bank in Faridabad or many such loaning agencies which ultimately collapse and a lot of money involved. There are other people there, so. A lot of problem with them. So that is one sector which you must understand, have more knowledge. There are articles and there are even conferences, and, and government is considering on these areas also. Right. The thought of it. <clears throat> This is my session. And uh, on a personal note, uh, 
don't use this tie definitely not no sir i'm not using uh, this blue color tie so why use for us if you're not going to use your upsc why use for us so only use. i'm preserving the uh, uh, lucky tie have, for the day i'm sure you must have many more ties so you can use yes, a better sir. tie for yourself so which tie would you like to use you go in the same suit uh sir i'll be wearing a different shirt uh and also there's a maroon color tie a maroon is professional good. maroon is good color is okay but no white tie is shirt shirt is okay it's a white shirt uh, yes it's a different shirt it's, it's a not different shirt. shirt not button if you possible not button sir uh, not it's not button. a button shirt not button so what about your performance in the mains this time is it better than last time i believe sir it is better i was more how prepared. much did you score your interview last year sir 193 193 out of 275 very good excellent mm-hmm. so i think you will score better this time mm-hmm. i wish you all the best anything you want to ask 193 is definitely very good score yeah. very good score yeah. that is what's up very good okay thank you thank you thank you, thank you.